In this video, we're going to look at question 2D from tutorial 5 from Learning Outcome 2. So this is looking at integrating, um, and in each of these questions in this tutorial, we're looking at one of our different examples of partial fractions. Um, and so in this case, the very first thing we do in a question like this is examine the denominator, because we know we don't have the tools to directly integrate um, an expression like this. So let's have a look at the denominator first of all. So we have this term x cubed minus 2x squared plus x. Now immediately we should see we can take a common factor of x from this expression. So we'll take x a common factor, we're left with x squared minus 2x plus 1. Then the question is can this be further factorised? Now you can um, do this by the, the various methods we have of splitting it up or you could use a quadratic function, but as it turns out, we can indeed factorize this further. This factorizes to x minus one all squared. And if you expand that, you can see we'd get an x squared term, we get a plus one term, and we get two minus x terms, giving us that minus two x in the quadratic function above. So we've got um, a single root, the, um, the x, and we've got a repeated root of the x minus 1 in this um, denominator here. So this tells us that we should be um, expressing our um, fraction here as 4x plus 3 over x cubed minus 2x squared plus x. And um, well, we've established this is in fact um, equal to 4x plus 3 divided by x x minus one squared. And so using the rules for partial fractions, we can write out this a over x plus b over x minus one. And because we have a squared root, we'll have a third term c over x minus one squared. Now, uh, simplifying this, um, we want to multiply both sides here by x over x minus one squared. And just to um, tidy things up a bit, we'll take a copy of this line and put it down below. We're going to multiply both sides here by x times x minus one squared. On the left-hand side, that's pretty straightforward. That's going to leave us with the numerator, multiply this by the denominator, so we've got the numerator left for x plus three. And on the right-hand side, we'll have a, b, and c multiplied by everything that's not canceled from their denominator. So a is left multiplied by x minus one squared. B will have a multiple of x times x minus one. One of the x minus one's cancelled because the x minus one um, on the denominator um, under b. And we'll have c times x because that's an x minus one squared dividing c. So we're now in a position to select some values for x in order to find values for a, b, and c, which will give us the expression we need um, for this um, <clears throat> integration. So we'll start off by selecting things that will make some of our terms disappear. Now we can see that both the b and the c are multiplied by an x term. So if we make x equal to zero, then these should disappear. So we'd have four times zero plus three is equal to a times zero minus one all squared plus b times zero times zero minus one plus c times zero. Four times zero is zero, so we'll have three in the left. Zero minus one is minus one, minus one squared is one, so we have an a. And the b and the c terms are both multiplied by a zero, so we're left with just a is equal to three, and that gives us the value for a. Now the next value to pick to make some of these terms disappear is one, because both a and b are multiplied by x minus one terms, so that selecting one means we can remove them from our formula and be left with a relationship for c. So x is equal to one, gives us four times one plus three is equal to a, one minus one squared, plus b times one times one minus one, plus c times one. And you can see those one minus one brackets multiplying a and b are going to go to zero. And that leaves us a seven is equal to c, four times one plus three is seven. And we can just say c is equal to seven. So we've got values for a and c. 
But we're left with the question is how do we find the value for B? And um, because we've used both of our roots, zero and one, um, and we've uh, uncovered all the values we can. But in a question like this, um, if you remember when we have a, a repeated um, factor on the denominator, we can pick another value for X that we haven't already used um, and get a different expression. And into that expression, we can substitute the values we've found for A and C already. And for simplicity, um, it's good to select something that doesn't give us too much uh, calculation to do. So I'm going to select X is equal to two. Um, you could pick any other value of X other than zero, one at, um, at this point. I was selecting two because we've got these x minus one terms, which are going to reduce to one and be quite simple for our calculations. So let's put, let's put in x is equal to two and see what we get. So we'll have four times two plus three on the left hand side. We're going to have a two minus one squared plus b times two times two minus one plus c times two. A little bit of tidying up and multiplying through is going to leave us with. Um, 11 on the left hand side, 2 minus 1 is 1, so 1 squared is 1, we'll get a, and we'll have b will be b times 2 times 1, so we'll have 2b plus 2c. And at this point, we can substitute our values for a and c. So we've got 11 is equal to 3 plus 2b plus 2 times 7. And rearranging and subtracting, we're going to be left with 2b is equal to 11 minus 3 minus 14, and that's going to be 2b is equal to minus 6, so b is equal to minus 3. So we now have values for a, b, and c, 3, minus 3, and 7. So this allows us to write our original expression uh, as being equal to, keep our integral on here as well, 5, between 5 and 3, and our new expression is going to be 3, over x, because that was our value for a, minus, because that's what we found, our b was a negative, I minus 3 over x minus 1, and then it would be plus 7 over x minus 1 all squared. And remember dx, because we have to include um, the full notation for our integral. So this is something that we can deal with, and in fact, we're going to be able to address this now directly, because these are expressions that we know how to integrate, and we know when we're integrating things that are added or subtracted together, we can deal with each term individually. So let's do this then. And we'll use square brackets here because we're going to write an expression which we're going to substitute our upper and lower limits into to find uh, an exact value for um, the value of this integral. <clears throat> so when we're integrating any um, constant multiples like three, we can um, leave alone and deal with the one over x. So the integral of one over x, just from our, our table notation, is just log x. Similarly, we have minus three here, and the integral of x minus one is just log x minus one. When we have a term in the form of ax plus b, we have log of the term, and we divide by whatever the number multiplying the x was. But in both of these cases, x has just been multiplied by 1, it's an x term by itself, there's nothing to divide through by, and we can write our log simply as log um, of the term in brackets. Then we have a, a term, um, we'll have plus 7 here, and then we've got 1 over x minus 1 squared to deal with. Now, um, x minus 1 over x minus 1 squared is the same as x minus 1 in brackets to the power minus 2. And when we integrate a function like this, um, what we do is we increase the power, so we go from minus 2 to minus 1. So I'll write it out like this, x minus 1 to the power minus 1. Um, we would divide through by uh, any number in front of the a, effectively divide through by the derivative of the bracket, but in this case it's going to be 1. And we also divide through by the new power. So we've raised the power to minus 1, so we're dividing all this by minus 1 as well. So that's um, how we would integrate that term. And again, that's from the standard table of integrals. And of course, this is between the limits of 5 and 3. But before we put these numbers in, let's tidy things up a little bit. When we are subtracting two log terms um, in the same base, um, and um, we have, we can take, take this as a common factor of 3, 
and then we've got log x minus log x minus one. This is the same as log x over x minus one, and that's from the, the rules of logarithms. Now, if you didn't know that, you'd actually be able to solve this next part of the question without that simplification, but it is the case and it does make what we're going to do next a little bit simpler. And then tidying all of this up on the right hand side of our bracket, we'll change to a minus sign and we'll have seven over x minus one because x minus one, where minus one means divide by x minus one. Again, we're we'll putting the values five and three as our upper and lower limits. So let's have a look at what this looks like. We have from an x equal to five, three times log five over four minus seven over four. And subtract from that, well, what happens when x is equal to three? We'll have three log three over two minus seven over two. And at this point, you'd be permitted just to put all this into the calculator and it would, um, it would come out with a value. But let's uh, finish simplifying it, um, first of all, anyway. Taking our log terms, 3 log 5 over 4 minus 3 log 3 over 2. We're taking 3 as a common factor on those. Um, but I'll write, I'll write these out in full, first of all, just to make it a little bit easier to see. So these are our log terms written side by side. So you can see where we're coming from here. And these are our fractions side by side. We have 7 over 4 plus, because minus times minus 7 over 2. And so using our rule of logs again, we're going to have 3 log, taking 3 as a common factor, 5 over 4 divided by 3 over 2. So when you divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the um, inverse of that fraction. We'll have log 10 over 12, which is the same as 5 over 6. And then 7 quarters plus 7 halves is going to be plus seven quarters. So we could write that one further step, simplifying that fraction within our log to five over six plus seven over four. And that's not um, particularly nice and neat at the end, but if we put these values into our calculator, we'll find that we actually do have the correct answer. Um, And the answer, we, in the course notes, we give the answers here to two decimal places. The answer is 1.20. And that is the correct answer. So slightly messy looking notation at the end, but working through what we've done is we've converted something we couldn't integrate into something we could. And then we've carried out our standard integration using our table of standard integrals, substituted in our upper and lower limits and carried out the calculation. And that's the answer to question 2D.